Viewers, very good evening. Fate deserted Arvind Kejriwal today. A Delhi court refused to grant him relief. As a result, the embattled chief minister is destined to spend four additional days in ED custody. On April 1, the matter will be heard once again. And viewers, there are no guarantees that Mr. Kejriwal will get relief. Today, of course, viewers, the court went into the arguments and after a recess, reconvened and said that we would want Mr. Kejriwal to spend four additional days answering certain pointed questions that the ED expects to put before him. But all of this was not before Mr. Kejriwal today stood up in court and argued his own case. That's right. Kejriwal, brimming with his trademark self-righteousness, pointed out inconsistencies in the Enforcement Directorate's case with loyally felicity. During his own defense, he conjured up some astounding revelations that have set tongues wagging. And let me walk you through, viewers, some of his arguments that he pitched himself. He says, no court has convicted me. There has been no case against me. YSR CP MP Mangunta Reddy came to me seeking land for a trust. Mangunta Reddy later changed his statement and named me. Mangunta Reddy's son was released after he named me. See Arvind claims, handover of policy documents at my home in my presence. But several MLAs and dignitaries come to my home. See Arvind's statement is baseless. Are mere statements from accused enough to arrest a sitting chief minister? He turned, of course, viewers, to the opposing counsel and said, consider this. If I were to get up tomorrow and accuse the Prime Minister or the Home Minister of corruption, would you arrest them? Mr. Kejriwal went on to say people are being clearly forced to change their statements. The accused turned approver. Sarath Reddy, for instance, gave 55 crore donation to the BJP. 100 crore scam has been alleged, but money trail has not been traced back to me. The motive of the ED is to crush the Aam Aadmi Party ahead of the elections and the Enforcement Directorate is on a mission to target me personally. These were the things, viewers, that Mr. Kejriwal said in his own defence, but clearly the court did not immediately stamp its authority on any of his claims, extending custody by four days, even though, viewers, the ED was seeking a longer duration. The ED, while not specifically responding to Kejriwal's significant revelations, stuck to the script. It listed in meticulous detail why it wanted more time to question Mr. Kejriwal. And let me walk you through, viewers, the ED's claims. The ED says Kejriwal is the kingpin and key conspirator of Delhi excise scam. And how do we know all of this, viewers? Because we access the remand note that was presented before the judge by the Enforcement Directorate. The ED in its remand nook has said that Kejriwal was directly involved in formulation of excise policy, that he demanded kickbacks from South Group for favours via policy, that Kejriwal's aide Vijay Nair was the middleman to secure kickbacks, 45 crores from proceeds of crime used in AAP's Goa campaign. As AAP convener, Kejriwal was the ultimate decision maker AAP has committed offence of money laundering via Mr. Kejriwal. The ED went on to say disobeying nine summons leads to inference of Chief Minister's involvement. Kejriwal giving evasive replies in custody during custodial interrogation. The ED said you await details of financial records, logins, an appointment diary from the Chief Minister. Remember viewers, this entire case hangs on certain meetings that took place at Mr. Kejriwal's residence. Now, the appointment diary would therefore be extremely important. And also, viewers, certain documents and financial records need 
to be looked at. And once extracted from instruments like mobile phones and computers, presented to Mr. Kejriwal for him to clarify. Now, while the Enforcement Directorate has not specifically rebutted Kejriwal's witness-fixing allegation, it might have a task at hand dispelling the notion that its star witness is not credible viewers. Here are some facts which Kejriwal is bound to dredge up. The chronology in which these facts appear certainly prompts questions. Now, viewers, look at your screen. We are talking about this individual, Sarath Reddy. On November 10th, 2022, Aurobindo Pharma Director Sarath Reddy was arrested by the Enforcement Directorate and accused of unfair market practices via excise policy. He was accused of conspiring with other businessmen and politicians. November 15th, five days later, viewers, Aurobindo Pharma purchases electoral bonds worth 5 crores. So on the 10th, the ED makes its claims. On the 15th, Aurobindo Pharma purchases these electoral bonds. On November 21, a week later, BJP encashes a sum of 5 crores via electoral bonds. And two years later, viewers, or rather a year later, June 2023, the court allows Reddy to turn an approver in the case against Mr. K. Sriwal. The court grants pardon to Reddy in the excise policy case, which was obviously, viewers, a plea bargain. Now, Mr. K. Sriwal believes that this reeks of quid pro quo. Let's open this up, viewers. This is an important matter. It's an important case. The Enforcement Directorate has the onus now to prove its case against Mr. Kejriwal. And let's bring in, first things first, the BJP national spokesperson, Mr. Ajay Alok. Mr. Alok, what we witnessed today in court is Mr. Kejriwal taking the stand himself, defending himself and making revelations which point towards, in his words, witness fixing. How do you respond to this charge? I've read out certain events that took place and the chronology of those events. See, this heroic was being planned since yesterday when Sunita Kejriwal announced in the court, mm. uh, announced on sitting on the CM chair that Kejriwal is going to do something big tomorrow in the court. Mm. So everybody was anticipating a some kind of dramatics was going to follow. So all mm. those theatrics and dramatics continued in the court that in spite of having a battery of lawyers, he decided to argue for himself. And instead of giving a particular answer about the evidences that ED have gathered, that more than 15,000 pages of documentary evidence, and he's not been cooperating at all, that's what the ED lawyer said in the court to the judge. And why he has not been cooperating? Because he's a lawless person. And what is lawlessness? A lawless person makes will, his will, his law. That is the problem. And this is the sect which is operating. I'm, I call them Aam Arajak Party, not on the basis of this. They are Aam Arajak Party. They don't follow the law. They don't follow the system. And they will create some other theatrics. But this is not going to work. Court functions according to the basis of evidence. And there is an evidence which needs to be probed, which needs to be investigated. That's why the remand, uh, the remand has been extended. Now, all this electoral bond and this and that is just trying to divert the strategy because everybody knows that the electoral bonds, every party has taken, whichever has taken, it's there in the books. It's the white money. Now, if somebody is saying that, yes, BJP is doing extortion by taking electoral bond and then giving them advantage, then how come other parties are getting it? Then only BJP should have got it, no? So, all these frivolous excuses are not going to help Mr. Kejriwal. He is bound to get convicted in this because there are evidences and this is, and mind you, this is not the only one scam. There are list of scams which are pending and investigations are going on. So they will have to take it. It cannot work like that. Mr. Joshi, let me bring you into this conversation. You've been uh, obviously holding up the corner for the Aam Admi Party for a while now. So I want to ask you this because this is an important question. Mr. Kejriwal gets up and makes a revelation which could blow this entire case open. But the court, the court pays no heed, extends his custody by four significant days. 
And if he doesn't cooperate, of course, Mr. Joshi, you know that the ED will come back and make the same plea, saying that we need more days till, in a sense, Mr. Kejival cooperates or we have enough material for him to not deny it offhand. So, Mr. Joshi, why is the court not sympathizing with Mr. Kejival or his other lieutenants? First and foremost, the courts will, we have discussed it uh, a number of times that the courts will adjudicate according to the law of the land. And when it comes to the PML Act and subsection 30, 45, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but, uh, you know, I've read so much about it. And the amendments done in 2023 makes it almost impossible if the enforcement directorate is saying that the uh, uh, so-called accused is not cooperating. So, for you know, for enforcement directorate, uh, an opposition leader's cooperation means uh, that he should, uh, you know, accept that he is guilty. Otherwise, he is not cooperating. It is as simple as that gets. Now, Ajay Alokji has made, uh, you know, so many tall claims uh, that, you know, uh, Mr. Kejival has done that and that and it's a lawless, he's a lawless man and everything. I mean, lawless man means to him that he makes, uh, you know, what whatever suits him is the law. So, uh, by this definition, I think Prime Minister Modi is the biggest lawless man in the country because uh, he amended the PMLA Act, he amended the GNC, uh, GNCTD Act. And um, uh, he, 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 he went back and forth on so many things. When, once the Supreme Court adjudicated on those matters, thereafter he misused the parliament and passed those laws. And those, those, those are still under uh, the purview of Supreme Court. The Honorable Supreme Court is still listening to the matter. So that is that. But he did not answer the important question that uh, since Sarat, Sarat Reddy was one of the prime accused in the matter, was he not following the money trail arising out of his own company? Uh, a very important company he, in which he was one of those directors. So, and how did the ED allow this to happen? Did the ED not keep a track on uh, the transaction in the accounts of Arbindo Pharma? I don't think ED is, uh, ED is as, as, as lined at the BJP headquarters and that is the only established money trail in this uh, so-called... Uh, okay, like so Mr. Scam. Joshi, you Rest say that is under, alleged. under the PMLA Act, it's a foregone conclusion. You are guilty unless you prove yourself innocent. So, why then does the Ahmadmi party and all the other lawyers that are obviously, you know, appearing for the AAP even bother to file these petitions? Then forget it. Sit at home. Well, you know, it's it's not like that. It, it, it is what do you mean it's clear. not like but that? You, Either you, it you is like that or it's not like that. I mean, come on. Baba, Rahul ji, Rahul ji. No, no, but you, Mr. You Joshi, you, you this is a bizarre I argument that you're using that, oh, you're condemned argument. under just, the PMLA forever. Just, you can't come out. Then why are these bail applications just, moved umpteen times by Mr. Sisodia, Sanjay Singh, Kejriwal ji and others? So, so, so that when the final judgment is pronounced, uh, our stand will be vindicated that what we have been talking <laughs> oh, about so you're just years, going through the motions. two and a half years down the line. <laughs> you know, the, we, we were, I don't, we, don't know we if people to fight as well. go to court to fight for as well. political so reasons. I would think they would go to court to get justice. This is almost sounding like what those 600 lawyers have written in their letter. That there is political grandstanding that is going on. Anyhow, let's let's let me very quickly. Okay, the BJP national spokesperson wants to respond very quickly, and I want to open this up. Yes, I just I just have two, two points to make. Mm. If law is required for curbing corruptions, then it's the responsibility of the person in the power to make law. Okay. That's why you are in government for. It's not for and law is for everyone. Not only for the opposition, it's for the ruling party also and everyone. That's why Modi ji makes laws and that does not make him a lawless person. Okay. Kejriwal is lawless because before becoming okay. CM, he was steal, stealing He's been elected to make laws. Seen. He's a legislator second, at the end of the, the court, day. Today in the court, 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 Kejriwal now has said to the judge that the, whatever the money came, it is already spent in the Goa election. So where is the money trail? He himself admitted that. Okay. Isn't well, this true? Well, look, we are not going to go into the merits. This particular hearing was about giving credible reasons to extend custody. The ED has given several. I can go back into the ED remand note and tell you the two or three important grounds which might have swayed the judge. But Dr. Ranganathan, let me come to you and ask you this fundamental question tonight. Is this case blown open because Mr. Kejriwal took the stand? and made these revelations, are we now supposed to think that the onus is back on the ED and the next 96 uh, hours hold the key? Uh, good
think uh, uh, Rahul to my fellow panelists, look, I have very briefly six points to make, and I want to make them very quickly. First of all, I this air has to be cleared. Forget about the stubble burning that AAP uh, indulges in from year to year. But this air has to be cleared because the AAP minister, Miss Atishi, has perhaps committed a contempt of court by claiming that the Honorable High Court, in its order, has raised serious questions about the political motive behind the arrest. The court did no such thing. In fact, the court quoted the petitioner as raising serious questions. So it's not the high court that has raised. The high court has stated, and I let me quote the high court order because you know this matter has to be cleared. This insinuation has to be completely flatly rejected. Number one, the petitioner has also raised serious and critical questions before the court and stated that this court, being a constitutional court, must apply its mind to the motive behind the arrest. Which is patently illegal and has a direct bearing on the democratic process of impending elections in the country. This is the High Court quoting the petitioner as saying the High Court is not making the statement. Secondly, the present petition raises several issues of legality and validity regarding the arrest and remand of the petitioner. Additionally, it questions whether the arrest may be politically motivated and malafide. The High Court is not questioning. Whether the arrest is politically motivated, the High Court is quoting the petitioner, i.e., Kejriwal, from questioning whether the arrest is politically motivated. So this mudding of water is helping no one. This has to be clarified, and I'm through you. I am. I hope that the viewers get this absolutely picture clear cut. Number two, for all those who are saying that the ED has been using draconian provisions, like the uh, previous panelists, let me inform them that each and every provision has been vetted by the Supreme Court three judge bench. And not only ratified, but also underlined and stamped. For example, you mentioned about the reverse, the burden of proof. The reverse burden of proof, Rahul, is now here to stay. Secondly, it is not mandatory to give ECIR. Third, bail to be made extremely stringent. Fourth, money laundering is to be considered as heinous as terrorism. Fifth, attachment of property is to be allowed. Sixth, statements made to the ED are to be made admissible. This is a Supreme Court that is very good. Finally. Did the Supreme Court not say that bail is a rule, jail is an exception? Why then, I ask, has bail been denied to AAP ministers implicated in the liquor scam? In fact, let me quote the Supreme Court order of two months ago pertaining to the excise state court. The excess amount of 7% commission earned by the wholesale distributors of 338 crores constitutes an offence as defined under Section 7 of the POC Act. These are proceeds of crime. Fourth, only once. Three ED summons are ignored by law. The next is non-bailable warrant to be issued for arrest of the person who is ignoring the summons. Kejriwal ignored nine summons. Five, the ED conviction rate for PMLA cases is 95%. So this isn't some political witch hunt. And an Aam Aadmi respects the law of the land. By the way, 30 seconds. Is this not the same Aam Aadmi party, Rahul, that arrested a Congress MLA six months ago on a case that the Supreme Court had itself squashed? And then the Congress MLA was arrested based on investigation carried out by the same ED. Then the AAP said, let law take its own course. And here, it is not willing to make the law take its own course. And finally, 10 seconds. May I know under which authority and provision of law is Mrs. Kejriwal using the chief minister's chair to wax eloquent? Okay, last question. Could you respond to it, uh, Mr. Joshi, very quickly on what capacity is uh, Ms. Kejriwal's wife using that chair? She is not sitting in the chief minister's office. She is addressing uh, the people of Delhi and the people of the country uh, from the video conferencing room of her own house, which happens to be her residence right now because Mr. K. G. Wal is still the chief minister. So how can you say that she is using the chief minister's okay. chair? Is she say, sitting in the secretary? In so stop slandering. Okay. Please okay. explain. Don't, don't slander, etc. Et okay, let me just bring in uh, Sanjay Jha. Sanjay Jha, forget about Sarat Reddy for a few moments. Mm -hmm. The statement for one of the candidates of the AAP of Goa elections in 2022 is also recorded during this period, who has revealed mm -hmm. that he was not having any money and his election expenditure was taken care by AAP Office Delhi only through their associates, number one. Number two, during the ED custody, data in one mobile phone belonging to Mr. Kejriwal's wife has been extracted and is being analyzed. 
However, data from four other digital devices seized during search at Mr. Arvind Kejriwal's premises are yet to be extracted as the arrestee has sought time in providing a password and login credentials. After mm -hmm. consulting with his lawyers, <coughs> if he has nothing to hide, why doesn't he just give these credentials? Which is, mm -hmm. of course, the passport and login. And how do you explain an AAP candidate himself making these claims, which further supposedly the ED line of inquiry that money raised in Delhi was spent in Goa? Uh, okay, Rahul, pretty serious questions. If you don't interrupt me, I will try and answer it in a nutshell. It's not just Arvind Kejriwal. They have arrested Manish Sisodia as well as Sanjay Singh on the same Delhi liquor scam. I want to ask a basic question that any citizen of this country will ask. Such a powerful body, the ED, it has so many talented officers. It's taken over a year for the trial to begin, for the cross-examinations to happen. Where ultimately I've been a banker, boss. I can I can tell you any anybody will ask this fundamental question. Paise kaha hai? And there is no money. Because the truth is that excise law actually was never operationalized. Therefore, you are never going to see any money here. It never became a law which was in practice or in vogue because it was actually withdrawn. That's point number one. Point number two. How can you ignore Sarat Reddy? I think your viewers have to understand the ridiculousness of the prosecution's case. The ED called him the kingpin of the liquor scam. So is the ED saying that we were stupid or we were lying? There are only two options. Either the ED says we were stupid or the ED says that we lied. Okay, because on what basis did he become an approver? Suddenly the ED decides to say we have no objection to the bail. And this man says he blames Kejriwal. Now, here is my question. I even have no problem with that, Rahul. But here is the here is the big issue that Narendra Modi should answer. Forget forget anybody else. Nirmala Sitaraman need to answer. That same Sarat Reddy's company gives electoral bonds of 55 crores to the BJP. So the BJP through the ED says this man is the kingpin of the liquor scam, then takes money from the same guy and based on his Sir, verbal... Can I ask you a counter question on this point itself? It's a scam. Sanjay Jhaji, can I ask you a counter question yeah. on this point? Yeah. Do you know there's a man called the Lottery King of India? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A man called Mr. Martin. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that the Congress party that you belong to has two major allies. Mm -hmm. The DMK and the TMC. Mm -hmm. Now, this Lottery King mm -hmm. has paid more than almost six to eight hundred crores, by some estimates, mm -hmm. a thousand crores between, mm -hmm. between these two political parties. Mm -hmm. And you know that he was under the scanner. Was he doing mm -hmm. it because he was paying hush money, protection money, hafta, call it what you want to? Okay, I'll answer you. I'll answer you very quickly, Rahul. Good question, by the way. I'll answer you. It's not just future gaming. Yes, sir, I'm Pharma. asking you specifically about this. I'm answering your question. I'm answering your question. Patience, patience. I'm answering your question. And I want Ajay Alok to answer me because he tried to be very clever in his defense. He said, well, it is a one-off. It is not a one-off. ED is an extortion racket. We are a sir, mafia. Sir, I'm asking you a specific Hafta question about Mr. Country. Martin. If I'm Mr. Martin pays money, he's under the scanner. He was mm -hmm. being prosecuted. If he pays money... Almost mm -hmm. a thousand crores to two mm -hmm. allies of the Congress party that mm -hmm. you are today contesting the poll with. Don't mm -hmm. forget, at least mm -hmm. one in DMK, in Tamil mm -hmm. Nadu, are mm -hmm. these political parties also getting hafta or securing hafta to yeah, give them protection? Tell you why they are not. Because I'm these political you. parties have in the past banned central agencies from yes, executing yes, their mandate Rahul, on their own soil. Rahul Jaram, mujhe bolne do. Come on, you be, be a gentleman. I'm answering your question. I'm only You're asking not you the question, sir. I'm not yeah. cutting you off. Uh, Rahul, yeah. five minutes. So, let, let, so let me answer you very quickly. Here is the case. Who, by the way, does the CBI or the income tax or the ED report to? The finance ministry. 
I would like Nirmala Sita Raman, who today said she doesn't have enough money, to kindly answer because okay. the responsibility is with the finance minister. Okay, viewers, minute, look at the way Sanjay Jha has now sidestepped this question because I added two points, viewers. Very important. One second, Sanjay ji, one second, please. I added two very important points, and the point is that these state governments have not once but twice prevented prevented viewers withdrawn permission. To central agencies, so sir, right. allow me, allow me, allow me. Say, it might be their right. It might be their right. It might be their right. I don't know. I'm because not. A, one second, Sanjay ji, please. Let me finish. Okay. I hope let you finish. let me come in later. No, no. I will. I will. Let me. Let me just finish, please. You know, I, I asked a simple question: Was Hafta being paid by a man called Martin, who is supposedly the lottery king of India, under the lens of the ED and other investigative agencies, to two state governments? And can, can anyone explain to me if Sanjay Jha is today accusing the BJP, the ED of extorting money from a particular individual called Sarath Reddy to make him into a witness? How I does that not apply you. then to the DMK and the TMC yeah, yeah. So who also you. have the powers to block investigative agencies from the centre to show up in their states? And guess where this great lottery king resided? Yeah. So let Yours. me answer you. And Ajay Alok, I hope you are listening. Mm. Kevinter Agro raided. Sir, forget Yashoda, it. There are many, many people. Arubindo there are many people. They've given money now. I am asking you a very specific, like project. for like question, and I'm not getting a like BJP for like answer. Okay, BJP spokesperson for. comes in. Respond, sir. It's a scam, Ajay Alok. It is the biggest What's scam the since okay, 1947. Okay, okay, Vijay, you you took so money, right? Okay. You you also Sanjay Jha, the Congress party, Sanjay took money, right? Operation. Why didn't they not? Why did they not take Aftar money? Why did they take money? So, you have also taken money under the same scheme. Why? Right. I'm sorry, there is no quid pro quo. Are there is no quid pro quo. Acha, there is no quid pro quo. Okay, okay. On this issue of quid pro quo, viewers, there is no quid pro quo. There is no quit pro quo. It is the BJP. Says. Oh, right. BJP there is the, is the BJP. I see. I see. BJP has given away contracts. Right, right. Okay. Okay. You, you, are, you were you were living off love and fresh air, of course. Okay, that's bizarre. I mean, viewers, viewers, viewers. If the scheme, if the scheme is corrupt, and you take money under that scheme, you say, "No, we have taken good faith." Though the scheme is corrupt, other people are corrupt. They have taken it. Come on, boss. Rahul. Sorry, Rahul, sir. the opposition called <laughs> the open. No, why, why, why don't you be no, honest today? Why don't you be honest? Why don't you be honest? He called the electoral bond a sham. No, not day not one. the Congress party, sir. It was the left party, the Marxists, who you are Everybody fighting in Kerala today. Who you no, no, are fighting no. in Kerala Everybody today? Yeah. They are the sham. only ones no. who went. Anyhow. Viewers, Hello, look, Rahul, I am not sitting in defense. I am not sitting India. in defense of the EB scheme. First of all, I am only catching out the, the hypocrisy in the answers that I am hearing. Okay, very quickly, Dr. Ranganathan, you are raising your hand. Yes, very quickly. Yeah, let, let's not muddy the waters. Uh, uh, is my only suggestion. Yeah. Yes, there are four approvers, not just one. Yeah, I am restricting myself to just this case. So even if you were to say yeah. that one approver is a bit shady. And under the carpet or cause or whatever, there are other three who are very robust. If you were to look at their sons of uh, MPs and MLAs, there are people who have said that yes, yeah. in my presence, this and this happened with Arvind Kejriwal. One is secretary of Manisha Sodia. One is the son of the uh, I think one uh, MLA from Andhra and Telangana. And as far as the approver under question is concerned, yes, it it looks terrible. I have to say this. Fact of the matter is. That the same guy who is now turned approver, Mr. Reddy, also gave. Yes. Uh, I think the same amount to TRS as well as to yeah. the uh, the other uh, the party, Telugu Desam Party. Absolutely. And the fact is, he became approver six months after he gave the money. So these guys were obviously expecting quid pro quo. They are giving, donating to every political. Absolutely.